Jeremy McClellan. All right. Woo! Gonna put this right here. How are y'all doing tonight? Y'all doing okay? I see a fist in the air. That's unusual. Anybody else? No hands in the air. That's good. I feel like Trump right now. Like raise your hand. Uh, no, I'm here. I'm, I'm excited to be here. My name is Jeremy McClellan. I'm excited to be here uh, for the same reason that all of you are here. Because uh, I hate roads. Who's with me? Who's with me? Anybody here hate roads too? Hate them. Good libertarian uh, identity. No, I'm, uh, I'm originally from Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, whenever I travel and do stand-up comedy, uh, people always uh, think that just because I'm from South Carolina, I must be conservative, right? Or I must be racist, you know? But like, I don't know if you guys know this, but South Carolina actually has a very rich, uh, progressive history. Like, I don't know if you know this, but South Carolina actually started the war that ended slavery. <laughs> so yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome, we did it. Uh, I originally didn't want to take this gig, but uh, Gary Johnson told me that I'm not allowed to refuse a customer. <laughs> Gotta bake that cake, right? Gotta bake. I think, in his defense, I think he just heard the word baked. And he's like, I'm totally on board. I am on board forever. Like, what do you think I was doing before this? This is what I was doing right now. No, um, anybody here for Austin Peterson? Anybody clap? For Austin Peterson? Anybody? That's cool. Uh, he's a great spokesman for Liberty, I believe. Uh, if you ask him any question about policy or any of the issues, he can explain to you in elaborate detail why you should not have asked him <laughs> about policy or issues. He's the only person who can describe why mandatory minimum sentences are wrong using the mandatory maximum number of sentences available in the English language. Uh, that leaves John McAfee. Anybody here for John McAfee? Anybody here for John McAfee? That's great. I'm actually uh, proud to endorse uh, John McAfee tonight. Uh, you guys, I'm proud to endorse him. Uh, not because of his character, like policies. I just really want, I'm just really trying to find some like LSD and mushrooms tonight. And I feel like he's the one who would totally hook me up with that, right? I'm excited to be here. Uh, there's one thing we can say about uh, all the candidates, though, all the candidates, is that none of them are the next Hitler. Right? None of the candidates are the next Hitler. Like, that should be the libertarian slogan this year. Just like, Gary Johnson gets the nomination. Just Gary Johnson, probably not the next Hitler. That should be a slogan. I think it'd be good. A lot of people uh, nowadays are saying that Donald Trump might be the next Hitler. Have you guys heard this? Have you heard people say that? A lot of people are saying that. And by people, I mean his supporters. They're like, oh my God. I think this guy might be the next Hitler. Like, ah, I'm so excited. I feel like, I don't want to jinx it. I don't want to jinx it, but like, I think Donald Trump might be the next Hitler. I'm so excited. Oh, man. I think it's time for, no, like, I, like, I don't, I don't mean to imply, like, I don't think that uh, supporting Donald Trump makes you racist, okay? I think it's a lot more likely that you are already racist, and that's why you support Donald Trump. It's like a whole causation thing. You gotta get that correct, you know. But uh, I think it's time for a woman president. Who's with me? You guys ready for that? A woman president? No, just think about it. Every other time we've ever had a president, it's been a man, right? And after they get into office, they all turn out to be liars and war criminals, you know? So like, why don't we, for a change, put a woman in the White House who's just already a liar and a war criminal? It was a <laughs> right, like she's ready. She's ready on day one. You know it would take Bernie Sanders at least six months to figure out how to invade a country. <laughs> That's six months. That's six months that we have. That's good. That's a good holding pattern. That's great. Oh, I like that. That's good. Uh, I have a, I have a pickup line in case any single men are trying to pick up female fans of Bernie Sanders. You want to hear it? All right. Just walk up to him at the bar and be like, "Hey, baby, are you the big banks? Because I don't really understand how you work at all. 
but I still want to be against you. There you go. There you go. Now, my wife, my wife's a Democrat. My wife likes Bernie Sanders. Like, a little too much. Like, a little, I'm sort of, like, suspicious. Like, she really likes him. And, like, we, like, we never really, like, made enough money to where taxes would hurt us. So, like, we never really cared about it. But, like, right now, we're, like, we're starting to make more money. We're starting to make more money. And so taxation is starting to hurt us. And so, like, uh... You know, I, I, I went online and I filled out one of those candidate tax calculators. You know what I'm talking about? Go on like Vox or Washington Post and it tells you uh, how your tax rate would change based on which candidate wins. And like under Ted Cruz, it, uh, it said that like our taxes would go down like $1,000. And under Trump, we wouldn't pay any taxes because the world would be destroyed. <laughs> no, it would go down about the same. And then under Hillary, it would go up like $500, $1,000, right? Under Bernie Sanders, it would go up $8,000. $8,000. That is a lot of money for me. Like, maybe not for you guys, but that is a lot of money for me. And I told my wife that, and her response was, well, hold on. What do we get for free? And I was like, well, it's not going to be free. Matter of fact, it's going to cost about $8,000. <laughs> I don't know where I'm getting that number. Just picking it off the top of my head. It's gonna be about $8,000. Like, I would just love to be her for a day. And just like go shopping, you know? And be like, I went to the grocery store, gave them $200. You will not believe what happened next. They gave me $200 worth of free groceries. Amazing! That is so generous of that grocery store. This is awesome. Went to the Gap afterwards. They took $100 out of my purse, but they totally made up for it. They gave me free pants. Oh my gosh! The Gap is so nice. I love the Gap. It's amazing. And then later she was like, well, hold on, okay, $8,000, but part of that is probably going to go to help my student loans. And I was like, you know what? You're right. That's true. Or... All of it could go to your help with your student loans if we got to keep the money. I don't know, just spitball it. Just guessing. Just guessing that. I don't know. I get bored talking about politics, you know? I get bored. Like, and I think, like, I don't know, like, I feel like everybody's already got their ideas mapped out, and so every political argument goes the exact same. And so, like, I, I like coming up with uh, political opinions that no one has. Right? It's super fun. Here's one I thought of. I think Obama is a secret Muslim. And I think that's really smart of him to keep that secret. Because there's a lot of bigots out there. Voted for him twice. Right? Right? That's an unusual political opinion. Here's another one. I think gay people are going to hell if they don't wait until marriage to have sex. <laughs> is there anyone who thinks that? Like, does that bend out? You're, you're raising your hands. But you're on, you're on, yeah, but you're on the other side of the, of the thing. So I don't know. You get to have opinions? I don't know. Oh, a press badge. Delegate! Oh my gosh. I just ruined it. I could have, I could have got, I couldn't have gotten the nomination. I just ruined my chances. Oh man. Just ruined my chances. That's great. Uh, last, well, last political opinion I thought of that no one has is, uh, I think, uh, I think the only woman who belongs in a man's bathroom is God. <laughs> Not a very... I don't think the Venn diagram really overlaps very well. I don't know. I think I'd rather have a king than a president. Right? You're shaking your head, you're nodding your head. Because he thinks he could be king. He's imagining himself. He's like, King Joseph, I'm going to do it. <laughs> yeah. I did some, did some research, found out everything you just know about you. Or I just read your, your, uh, your name tag. But no, I think I'd, I think I'd rather have a king than a president. Because think about it, like, if you get a bad king, you're like, man, we got a bad king this time. That sucks. Like, it doesn't say anything about you as a country, right? But if you get a bad president, you're like, man, we're a stupid country. Like, you have to admit something about yourself, right? Like, like, I feel like having a king is like having an arranged marriage. 
right? Like you get your wife in the mail, you open the box up, you're like, ah, she's ugly. Damn it. Oh well, guess I got an ugly wife, right? But like, electing a president is like meeting your wife on eHarmony. Because like all of the technology and all of the algorithms in the world are telling you that this is your soulmate, right? And then she starts bombing the neighbors. And like locking the neighborhood kids in, in the basement for like smoking a plant. Like, you're like, oh, I have a bad soul, I think. I have a bad soul. Who here has, uh, has flown recently? Who here flew here? Who here has gone through the TSA? People are scared. What? That's cuddle time. That's what? Cuddle time? You're calling, you're calling the TSA cuddle time. I feel like you don't get enough affection in your life. You're a libertarian, of course you don't get enough affection. What? The male-female ratio here is off the chain for her. And she's like, I just don't get enough affection. I just do not get enough affection. I don't know. That's crazy. I, uh, there's, a, there's a place in Orlando, there's a store in Orlando, uh, a business that you may have seen signs for on the side of the road. It's called 911 Driving School. Yeah, learn to drive from real police officers. I don't know if I'd want my kids learning how to drive from real police officers. Like, what would that be like? Like, all right, kids, welcome to 911 Driving School. Lesson number one, always buckle your seatbelt. Or don't, fuck it, we're cops. We can do whatever the hell we want. Y'all wanna go 80 through a red light? Just turn the siren on for like five seconds. And hell, texting while driving, I got three open laptops in the front seats. Who's gonna give us a ticket? Other cops? I'd like to start a rival business, you know? 420 Driving School. Yeah. Learn to drive from real drug dealers. Cause you know they'd be like, all right kids, welcome to 420 Driving School. Lesson number one, obey all traffic laws. Okay? I'm talking full and complete stops. At or below the speed limit, there's a kilo in the trunk. Do not get stops. No matter what happens, do not trust anybody who works over at 911 Driving School. Uh, you guys are great. Anybody else think it's weird that uh, cops and firefighters have the same phone number? Because they have, they have very different reputations, don't they? Very different reputations. Like, nobody hates firefighters. Nobody's ever, like, yelled fascist at a firefighter. Nobody's ever thrown a Molotov cocktail at a fire truck. Right? Like, fascists! Nobody's ever done that. You know? I think it's because they wait around for somebody to call them for help. You know? They hang out in the fire station, they play with that Dalmatian, they lift weights. I don't really know what firefighters do, guys. Right? But cops, they don't wait. They go out looking for somebody to help. They're like, hey, can I help you? No, nah, I'm good. Why are you resisting? What? Kapow! And that's it. That's it. Right? Like no cops, like no firefighter has ever like gone to the wrong dress and drowned someone's dog. <laughs> I think that's just true. I think that's just straight up true. I don't know. It's so weird. And this is great. It's going great. Uh, going back to the TSA, a lot of people are scared. There was an economist up here earlier uh, I don't know if anybody was scared about that, scared of him, but did you, guys, did you guys hear about this? There was an economist on a plane, and the person next to him, the woman next to him, got scared because he was doing math on a napkin. And she reported him for being a terrorist. And they, they delayed the flight like two hours to interrogate this economist because she thought he was, like my favorite thing about that is like, she thought he was a terrorist, but not a very prepared terrorist. <laughs> like he just had to like, do some last minute calculations, like right before the big terrorist attack, you know? <laughs> He's sitting there like, ah, oh, I should've, I should've been here sooner, but uh, shoot, always wait until last minute. Okay, what is it? X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. 
Great, now I can now do some terrorism. So weird. I got interrogated a few months ago by the TSA uh, because my business cards have a picture of a grenade on them. And they were like, what is that grenade doing on there? I'm like, uh, it's, just, it's just a symbol. And they're like, oh, really? And they asked me like tons of questions about that. Like, they were really interrogating me, which I think makes perfect sense. Because you know how terrorists like usually carry business cards? <laughs> like for networking? At all their like high profile terrorism meetings, they're like, no, 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 no. It's Muhammad Adda the terrorist. Not Muhammad Adda the accountant. Yeah, I put a, I put a grenade on there. <laughs> just so you know. Just so you know who I am. I don't know. Uh, before I did comedy, I used to work, like a long time ago, I used to work with uh, people with intellectual disabilities. That was my day job before, uh, before comedy. And uh, one time I had to accompany one of my clients on a trip to California to see his grandparents. And there's two things you gotta know about my client. Number one was his name was Saeed. Uh, he was from Pakistan. And he was autistic. So he sweats, gets anxious, fidgets, and asks lots of questions about how planes work. <laughs> so like the worst possible combination for trying to get through security at the airport, right? And so his dad was worried. His dad like was like, okay, you, like, you gotta explain to this guy. You gotta explain uh, and like, coach him on how to get through security. So I did, like I sat him down. I was like, look, because of 9-11, uh, people are anxious around people who are Middle Eastern, and because of that, uh, you know, you're also autistic, and so, like, you may seem nervous, seem anxious, um, and so we're gonna, like, play a role, some role playing. We're on the TSA agent, I'm asking you questions, your boarding pass, and kind of get through, and we did. We practiced back and forth, and, like, he was all set. He was all ready to go, and then we go to the airport. And he walks up to the TSA agents and says, Hi, I'm Saeed, and I'm not a terrorist. <laughs> I may see, this is literally, he's like, I may seem like a terrorist because I'm Middle Eastern and autistic. However, I'm not. And he really added this. He was like, and I will have you know, I strongly disagree with what Bin Laden did. <laughs> now look, in his defense, Strongly disagree is the strongest option on many forums and surveys. But I feel like when you're talking about 9-11, you want to go even stronger. You want to kick it up a notch. It's a little bit like saying, I believe slavery was rude. You're like, well, it was rude. It was rude. Uh, I think we're going to go ahead and do that. That's great. No. And like I'm, like, I'm standing next to him and like, I'm getting nervous because I don't know what he's going to say about me, right? Like, and this is the guy who trained me. Taught me everything I need to know about terrorism. Yeah, and he coached me on how to get through security without raising any red flags. And he packed my bags this morning. Which is true. Which is true. But thankfully, thankfully the TSA took it all in stride, okay? Thankfully they realized what was going on, they laughed, they let us through, all good, right? So I think the moral of the story is that if you are a terrorist, just pretend to be autistic. <laughs> and the TSA will just let you on through. Let you on through. Oh man. So, uh... A little something about me, I'm a bit of a late bloomer in life. Uh, I actually didn't start getting good with women until I turned 30, which is coming up in about a year. Very exciting, <laughs> very excited. I think one of my problems was like I was, uh, you know, oh shit. <laughs> iPad down. Oh no. Is he good? No. Oh, moment of silence. Moment of silence for his iPad. He just dropped it. That's so. I'm so sorry, sir. Should we take a collection? Yeah. Should we pass around a hat? Does anyone have a hat? Like, if Jeffrey Tucker was here, we could take one of his big hats and like pass it around like as a collection to everybody. Okay. All right. That's cool. That's cool. 
No, I, I, I did manage to get good at one woman, though. Uh, her name is Stephanie. And uh, six months ago, we got married. Yeah, that's cool. Six months ago, we got married. It was great. Uh, like, we had just like a very traditional southern wedding. You guys ever been to one of those? Well, if you haven't, it's not a shotgun. She's got to she do like a shotgun thing. It wasn't a shotgun wedding. Uh, it's a very traditional southern wedding. If you haven't been to one, uh, it's this thing where you take your entire life savings, okay? You put it all on a raft, and then you just set it on fire in the Atlantic Ocean. It's just a beautiful, traditional, southern, Viking wedding. Goodbye, all my money. Now, like I said, my wife is a Democrat. I'm a libertarian. My wife's a Democrat. I'm trying to turn her around, you know? And so for her birthday this year, for her birthday, I got her a, a DVD copy of 12 Years a Slave. Just so she'd finally understand what it was like for Anne Rand to pay taxes. <laughs> know what I'm talking about? Uh, sometimes you get into fights. The other day, uh, she, I, I got into an argument because she was saying that women still make 77 cents for every dollar that a man makes. Who here has heard this? Who here has heard that women still make 77 cents for every dollar that a man makes? That's what my wife was saying. But like I explained to her, like I studied economics, right? So like I explained to her that's just because men naturally gravitate towards higher paying professions, like doctor or engineer or CEO. Whereas women, this is true, just naturally gravitate towards lower paying professions, like female doctor and female engineer and female CEO. Like it's not, it's not our fault you don't apply for the regular jobs. Just turn the application over. It's all right there in the fine print. Now I think men should make more than women. I do, you know why? Because we provide for women. Like we end up sharing all that extra income with our wives and our daughters to take care of them. Which can get really expensive, because I don't know if you guys know this, but they only make like 77 cents for every dollar that a man makes. <laughs> so if anything, men should be getting a raise, just $1.23, just to make up for all that sexism women experience in the workplace. Have I convinced you? Have I convinced you? Now this is true in my own relationship. Okay, uh, my wife uh, is a female architect, right? She makes lady buildings, right? And uh, I'm a stand-up comedian, and yet she still makes only about 77 cents for every, like, 23 cents that I make. Which is why I married her, guys. So we can become one man. Now we're the patriarchy. But, uh... We are the patriarchy. But, like, we got into an argument, like, right before the wedding, because she told me she was not going to take my last name. Yeah. Because she's a feminist. And we all know a real feminist keeps the name she got from her dad. <laughs> like, literally, a patriarch. She was like, well, we could do a hyphen. It's like, I don't want to do a hyphen. That's just your dad's last name, minus my last name. <laughs> I don't even want to know what that equals. But you guys, we figured out the perfect solution. Uh, she took my last name, okay? And I took her first name. Now we're both Stephanie McClellan. Now you guys, how you doing? My name's Stephanie McClellan. It's my wife, Stephanie McClellan. In case you can't tell, this is what equality looks like. Now we both make 77 cents for every dollar that man makes. But uh, my maiden name is Jeremy McClellan. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you guys for being here. Do we want to do a Q&A? Is that, that's weird, right? That's weird. No one has any questions for me. All right.